the mechanical room. So the fitness center, which is this guy, is not cooling. It is 40 degrees outside, but we're cooling because it's a gym. We want it to be cool. All right. This is the dehumidifier for the pool, but we're not working on that. Thank goodness. Uh, so first things first, um, I did check the thermostat. It is calling for cooling. Uh, it's set to 65 and it's currently 70 in there. I checked the supplies. It's definitely not cooling. So let's see what's going on. So here we go. All right, so first thing I noticed is uh, the liquid line is condensating. It's pretty wet. I don't know if that shows. But yeah, it's pretty wet. See, the suction line feels kind of, oh, yeah. There's a little piece of ice in there. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, so we got a little bit of ice. So she's freezing over. All right, cool. We're gonna verify we're receiving the call first and we'll go from there. All right, so we're gonna check our calls. So we got a call for fan, this fan's running. All right, cool. Uh, we have a call for, yep, we got a call for compressor. Uh, do we have a call for reversing valve? Yep. So our coil is completely frozen. Oh yeah, ice coilitis. So um, I know the fan was running because I could feel air coming out of this. Let's check this filter. So they changed it yesterday, so I don't know what it, the old one looked like. I hate it when they do that. So yeah, we need to defrost this bad boy. Oh, it's a heat pump. We can put her in heat mode. That should melt that coil pretty quickly. All right, so we got her closed up for now, just so she'll melt. She's melting pretty quickly now that I got her in heat. Uh, once it's fully melted, we'll go ahead and check the refrigerant charge, make sure that this thing has a low ambient kit, and then uh, we'll go from there. All right, so we're back the next day. Looks like all the eyes cleared out. Yep. Sweet, let's go on the roof. All right, so we located our unit up here on the roof. It's a 410A, it's a 2016. 10 amps on our compressor, 10.9 is, uh, is our RLA, run load amps. We're at four, so she's definitely under a low load. So we'll throw some gauges on here and see what's going on. I think these have been rubbing up there, but not all the way through. So it's not really putting out warm air. Suction line is pretty warm. True suction is also warm. So I'm gonna suspect we're low on charge. Let's hook up some gauges. It's a little cold today, it's about 50. So uh, we're gonna have to do a low ambient uh, guesstimation, uh, but also uh, our sub our sub cooling should be about 10 on this unit so we're putting a thermometer here just to get a more accurate reading of the temperature all right so of course uh, only one of my clamps are working so we need to get some batteries for that but i'm getting my sub cool reading currently at 1.7 so the refrigerant charge is definitely low suction pressure is low our head pressure is kind of low um, so currently it's 55 degrees out here so i should be seeing a liquid saturation about 20 degrees above that, so it should be about 75-ish. Just a quick thing. Um, suction pressure is definitely low. Let's see what our discharge pressure is. Um, nice thing about uh, trains is they actually have a discharge port here. So this is the true discharge, so this is a heat pump. So this, this no matter what mode it's in, that's always the discharge. Then I'm hooked to the true suction, which in whatever mode it is, it's always the suction. Let's see what our discharge pressure is looking like. Yeah, so it's only 170. So yeah, that's pretty low. So we got low charge. So yeah, we, we have no heat transfer happening. I'm surprised it actually froze. Probably it was running overnight and that's what caused it to freeze. But yeah, we're definitely under a low load on the compressor as well. So we're gonna go ahead and talk to our client, see what they wanna do. Um, I suspect they're gonna just have us charge it and throw in some uh, leak stop, but we'll see. I talked to the client, so they just want me to charge it up and put some dye in it. So here's my setup. So I just, uh, my company, we had a, uh, what do you call it, a gift exchange, and somebody got me this Milwaukee folding thing, and it's awesome. I actually carried the whole thing up the stairs, uh, going up the stairs, because it's got one of those, you know, those stair things coming up here, you know, where they're not flat, they're like one, well, uh, yeah, anyway, whatever. Anyway, I use this thing every day, and it's pretty awesome. I love it. 
So now I don't have to carry all this stuff. I can wheel it. Um, and then that thing gets pretty small. So anyway, um, yeah, so I pulled the disconnect so it doesn't refreeze. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and charge this thing up and then we'll put some dye in it uh, and we'll go from there. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and charge refrigerant. So make sure that when you're doing this with probes like I am, you're gonna be using a service tee. So you have your, your tank hooked up here and your pressure so you can measure. Uh, and, and normally I, this is how I charge, but when I'm doing like a compressor change out something where I'm removing refrigerant, adding refrigerant, putting nitrogen, all that stuff, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna use gauges. But for this, this is what I use my probes for. I use both. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and bleed out the air. Okay. And then uh, we're gonna go ahead and reset our scale. And also when you're using these T's, make sure you have a Schrader depressor in your hose. I this, this one doesn't. So yeah, I have four hoses and none of them have depressors in them. I don't know why, but anyway. So we're gonna go ahead and crack it. And that way we're just letting a little bit of refrigerant, but we're, what we're doing is we're metering it. So we're converting it from a liquid to a vapor. That way we don't blow up our compressor. And if you feel this part getting cold after the valve, that means it's doing that. So I'm gonna put in about a pound and then we'll see how it goes from there. Now it's pretty cold today, so it's gonna take a while. And so anyway, I'm keeping an eye on my pressures and my amp draws on my compressor because my compressor sounds terrible right now. Okay, so amp draws are about the same. Our pressures have gone up a little bit. We're at 108 on our high side, or our, sorry, our low side, and 186 on our high. Uh, sub cone's at 4.5, so it has increased, and that's with one pound. But I'm gonna let it run because it's 410A, so I'm gonna let it run for a little bit and just see what's up. Yes, yes, I just realized that I had this on the on the discharge line. So that's why my sub cool went up a little bit. <laughs> Whoops, so yeah. I know you guys already commented on it, but yes, I just noticed it right now. Now that's on the actual liquid line, I'm getting about four. It did it did go to about five. My superheat's at like 13 degrees. Um, I'm gonna call it good at this point. I'm just worried about overcharging it. Uh, currently it's 53 degrees. So uh, my liquid saturation is about 70. So it's close. Uh, and this thing holds six pounds and I've had to add four pounds so far. So I'm really getting close to overcharging this unit, but again, it's only 53 degrees right now. So um, I'm gonna kind of let it run for a bit and monitor. I'm gonna go down into the fitness area and see if uh, see if it's actually blowing cold air. But uh, my suction temperature is now 47 degrees. Uh, saturation's at 33 degrees, which eh, we have low low head pressure. So head pressures or liquid pressures at 198. And that's still pretty low, but uh, you know, this is the best we can do in this situation. So uh, we're gonna go check and see what our temperatures look like. All right, good. Yeah, so we got a nice little view up going on up here. See the mountains and everything. It's a nice sunny day. All right. There's the old mill. See the mountains. Yeah. Anyway, let's go ahead and get some dye in this bad boy. All right, so I've closed my, my tank here. Uh, what I wanna do is I wanna get rid of all the liquid refrigerant in my hose. So I'm just gonna charge it into the unit. Just like that. Cool. And that's it. So we're gonna take all this stuff off so I don't get dye all over it. Okay, so we got our tube. Um, we need our injector. That's very important that you have this piece on there. This piece right here. Uh, this is going to allow us to purge any air out of the system. So we're going to go ahead and unscrew this right here on the bottom first. Okay. Screw that on there like that. Unscrew that. So now we're going to put our injector piece on, which is this guy. We screw that on top. Now I have a towel here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put this end on the towel and we're gonna go ahead and twist this part here until a little bit comes out. You can see it's coming out. The idea is we're now it's completely full of dye and not air. Now we gotta take this tip off. 
And it's very important you keep that tip on when you're not when you're storing this, otherwise the thing will get stuck. Alright, so now we're gonna put it on our suction line. Okay, so we have it on here. Very important that you just make sure it's screwed on all the way, otherwise if you do this you'll feel pressure. And if you just keep forcing it, this will explode and you'll get dial over everything. So you turn it slowly at first. And you want to do this when the system is fully charged and running. And then I usually hold it up that way if there's any air bubble, it stays and it just goes up to the top. And now you want to unscrew this, and while you're unscrewing it so it doesn't shoot the refrigerant area, pull away from it. Now another thing, important thing when working with dye is, as you can see, I wiped it off. Um, that's try, you want to try to get as much of the dye off of everything. Also, uh, put the sticker on there. That way we know there's dye in there so we don't use our good gauges. That's how you diagnose a low charge system in a low ambient conditions. Uh, 55 degrees in this case. So anyway, um, it's kind of a guess. Mainly what I'm going to be looking at is I'm looking at high site saturation. I usually want to about 20 to 30 degrees above ambient. Um, I'm trying to get my subcooling as close as possible, but it's never going to be accurate because it's just too cold and you just don't have the right head pressure. Um, so I kind of tend to look at my sub, my super, uh, super heat a little bit more, even if there's a TXV. Um, another thing too, is I also go by Delta T. So that's temperature differential between supply and return. And then also by return and discharge. Um, I'll look at for discharge, I'll look about 30 degrees and then supply usually about 20 degrees ish, 18, 22 ish. Um, and that's pretty much all you can do. I'm gonna set up a return visit to come check it out again during the summer when it's warmer, just to make sure I didn't overcharge it or undercharge the thing, and then we'll kind of go from there. But this should at least get them by for now. It's not freezing anymore. Everything seems to be running fine. So anyway, um, that's how you charge a system in a low ambient conditions. It's kind of an educated guess. It's not as straightforward as when it's warmer outside. So yeah, anyway, it's pretty rough. Uh, I, I know you guys with all the experience are going to be like, ah, you did it wrong. Well, this is how I did it. And like I said, I'm going to come back during the summer and double check it. So anyway, hopefully this helps you out. So thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe, comment, tell me what a horrible technician I am. Hit that bell notification and follow me on Instagram, Facebook. If you want to support the channel, pick up some tools on my tool store and uh, get some of those uh, camel socks. Thanks for watching.